welcome my dear children today we are going to discuss chapter number 6 tissues this is our second session of this chapter in our previous session we studied about tissues we also studied about the differences between plant and animal tissues we studied about the introduction of plant tissues in which we studied that there are two types of plant tissues meristematic tissues and permanent tissues and we also discussed about meristematic tissues and types of meristematic tissues in today's session we are going to discuss about permanent tissues in plant types of permanent tissues simple permanent tissue that is one of the type of permanent tissue then we will also discuss about different types of simple permanent tissues we will also learn about structure and function of different simple permanent tissues and at the end we will also learn about epidermis so let us begin children in previous session we studied about meristematic tissues and in this session we will be discussing about the permanent tissues what happens to the cells formed by meristematic tissues you know children that in meristematic tissues the cells keeps on very fastly dividing and forms a new cells so what happens to these new cells which are formed by meristematic tissues these cells take up a specific role and lose their ability to divide and as a result they form a permanent tissue this clearly tells that permanent tissues are not dividing tissues like meristematic tissues and these are also known as differentiated tissues in meristematic tissues you studied that meristematic tissues are known as undifferentiated tissues and these permanent tissues are differentiated tissues because they have a specific role to play this process of taking up a permanent shape size and function is called as a differentiation process cells of meristematic tissues differentiate to form different types of permanent tissues in this slide you can see that plant tissues can be divided into two categories meristematic tissues and permanent tissues and permanent tissues can again be divided into two groups that is simple tissues and complex tissues simple tissues are called as simple because they are made up of only one type of cells and these cell tissues can again be categorized into different groups that are parenchyma tissues collenchyma tissue and sclerenchyma tissue so let us begin with simple permanent tissue as i told you that these tissues are simple because they are made up of only one type of cell so here all the cells that make up the tissue are similar in its structure and they have the same parts in them simple permanent tissues are again classified into three categories that is parenchyma tissue collenchyma tissue and sclerenchyma tissue parenchyma is a type of simple permanent tissue that makes a major part of ground tissues in plants where other tissues like vascular tissues are embedded they are non vascular and are composed of simple living and undifferentiated cells which are modified to perform various functions let us discuss some more interesting features of parenchyma tissues these tissues are thin walled and are made up of cellulose and these are relatively unspecialized or undifferentiated cells the structure is isodimetric and these are living cells which lie between the specialized tissues most abundant tissues and it is found in all non woody parts of root stem flowers fruits etc cells of these parenchyma tissue are oval spherical and it can be poly polygonal also the central vacuole and peripheral cytoplasm is present in them and nucleus is also present they are loosely packed with small and large intercellular space so now let us focus on the structure of this parenchyma tissue here in this section of parenchyma tissue you can see that walls are very thick with a deposition there and this deposition is mainly of cellulose 
and there is nucleus also there are types of parenchyma tissues or sometime these tissues perform a special function if these tissues contain chlorophyll in them and performs a function of photosynthesis then these tissues will be called as chlorenchyma because of presence of chlorophyll in them whereas in case of aquatic plants large air cavities are present which gives buoyancy to the plant and help them to float on water and that time these parenchyma tissues changes into erenchyma tissues means they contain air into them so that the aquatic plant can float on water so these are certain modifications of parenchyma tissues now let us discuss about the functions of parenchyma tissues this tissue provides support to the plant and store food the parenchyma of stems and roots also store nutrients in them plant parenchyma cells make up the bulk of leaves flowers and the growing and dividing inner parts of stems and roots they perform the functions such as photosynthesis food storage sap secretion and gaseous exchange etc now there is another kind of parenchyma tissue which is known as cholenchyma children this cholenchyma is different from chlorenchyma chlorenchyma is a part of parenchyma or is a modified version of parenchyma this cholenchyma tissue is composed of elongated cells with less intercellular space whereas in case of parenchyma tissues you saw that there is enough intercellular space between the cells here that space is less the cell walls of cells are thicker at corner due to presence of a special chemical substance which is known as lignin this tissue provides flexibility to the parts of plant and allows easy bending of that parts this tissue also provides mechanical support to the small and soft part of the plants in this slide you can see the structure of this cholenchyma wherein you can see cytoplasm nucleus middle lamella chloroplast vacuole intercellular space which is very less and primary cell wall we can find this tissue near leaf stalks below epidermis the cells of this tissue are living elongated and irregularly thickened at the corners and there is a very little intercellular space now let us discuss about another type of parenchyma tissue that is a sclerenchyma tissue This tissue is composed of long narrow dead and thick walled cells children here it is very important to notice that these cells are dead cells the cell wall contains lignin which provides hardness to them no intercellular space is present here in sclerenchyma this tissue provides hardness and strength to the parts of plants like walnut seed coat etc in this slide you can see that coconut shell is shown here this coconut shell is very hard and it is made up of sclerenchyma tissues and these tissues are dead tissues this tissue makes the plant hard and stiff that is the main function of this tissue the cells of the tissue are dead and they are long narrow as the walls are thickened due to lignin which act as a cementing substance and this substance hardens the cell that is why these tissues are very stiff and hard there is no intercellular space present in these tissues because of thick cell walls this tissue is present in stems around the vascular bundles in veins of the leaf and in harder coverings of the seeds and in nuts here in this slide you can clearly see the picture of these tissues you can see here that lignin deposition is there and there is lumen and 
sclerites are there now in this slide you can see the comparative structure of parenchyma tissue collenchyma tissue and sclerenchyma tissue you can see the cross sections of all three types of tissue and longitudinal sections of all three types of tissue now let us study about the differences between parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma the shape of parenchyma is isodimetric cells which are oval spherical and polygonal in shape whereas in collenchyma the cells are mostly circular and oval or it can be polyhedral too in sclerenchyma variable shapes are found and fibers and sclerites are also found the cell wall in parenchyma is made up of cellulose whereas the cell wall in collenchyma is uneven thickening on the cell wall and in sclerenchyma it is lignified secondary cell wall which is present in them cytoplasm is abundantly present in parenchyma and in collenchyma also it is present but in case of sclerenchyma it is absent as these cells are dead cells the nucleus is present in collenchyma and parenchyma both but it is absent in sclerenchyma the reason is same here because these cells are dead cells the vacuoles are very large in parenchyma whereas these vacuoles are also present in collenchyma but these vacuoles are absent in sclerenchyma intercellular space that means the space between the two cells is present in parenchyma and is absent in collenchyma and sclerenchyma the occurrence of parenchyma tissue is basically in pith cortex medullary rays and all other soft part of the plant it is the most abundant tissue which is present in the plant so basically it is a packaging tissue or packing tissues of the plant and collenchyma is present in dicot stems petioles and beneath the epidermis and it is absent in monocots and in roots sclerenchyma is present in dicot hypodermis bundle sheath pericycle seed pulp of fruit etc the function of parenchyma is the storage of food and photosynthesis in case of chlorenchyma whereas in collenchyma the function is to provide tensile strength and mechanical support and photosynthesis whereas the function of sclerenchyma is to protect the part of the plant like uh, seed and it provides a mechanical strength to the plant and it enables the plant to bear the stress and strain from external environment now there is another kind of uh, very important part which is present in plant tissues which is also known as dermal tissues and it is a very important part of plant tissues because it forms the outermost layer of the plants and this is known as epidermis children in this diagram you can see vascular tissues vascular tissues means the tissues which transport or which transfer food and water and mineral in plant these are called as vascular tissues which are made up of xylem and phloem which are complex tissues that we will discuss later on then you can see ground tissues and the third one which is denoted here is dermal tissue that is epidermis so epidermis is very important part of plant tissues let us discuss about it it is the outermost layer of the cells and it is single layer of cell here in this diagram you can see that uh, there are single series of cells which is present at the outermost covering or outermost side of the cell and these cells are having stomata in them and these stomata are made up of guard cells children if you will take any leaf and if you will try to pull out the outer covering of that leaf you will see epidermis there in case of cactus epidermis may be much more thicker 
to prevent the loss of water in them. Entire surface of the plant has this outer covering of epidermis and there is no intercellular space in epidermis. And these cells are comparatively flat in structure. The functions of epidermis in plants are so many. As it is the outermost covering, so it protects all the internal parts of the plant. Epidermal cells are on the aerial parts of the plant often secrete a waxy substance which makes the plant water resistant and it forms a water resistant layer on the outer surface of the plant. This helps in protection against the loss of water, mechanical injury and invasion of any parasitic fungi. On the epidermis, there are small pores which are present and these pores are known as stomata. These are found on the lower and sometimes upper epidermis surface of the leaves and the singular of these stomata are known as the stoma whereas stomata is the plural form. The hole is surrounded by two guard cells and these can open by becoming turgid and close by becoming flaccid. Guard cells contain chloroplast in them and these are usually open during the day and get closed at night. So in this slide you can see the structure of stomata which are embedded in epidermis. Here you can see closed as well as open stomata. Now there is one more special type of epidermis which is known as root epidermis. It is outermost single layer of the cells that protects the root from various diseases and it also absorbs water and nutrients from the soil. Root hairs are also a kind of epidermis which are tubular extensions of epidermal cells. It increases the surface area of the root for better and more and more absorption of water and nutrients from soil. As plant grows older, the outer protective tissues undergo certain changes in them. A strip of secondary meristem located in the cortex forms a layer of cells which constitute the cork. Cells of the cork are dead and compactly arranged without intercellular spaces in them. They also have a substance which is called as subirin in their walls which makes them impervious to gases and water. In today's session, we studied about permanent tissues and its types. We studied about simple permanent tissues and its characteristic features. And then we also discussed about three types of simple permanent tissues that are parenchyma tissues, colenchyma tissues and sclerenchyma tissues. We also studied that sometimes parenchyma tissues modified to form chlorenchyma and arenchyma tissues. Then at the end of this session, we studied about epidermis, where we studied the structure and function of epidermis and we also studied about stomatas and their structure and root epidermis. Now children, there are some questions for you. How permanent tissues are formed? How many types of permanent tissues are there? What are the functions of epidermis? And the next question is, what is the role of arenchyma tissues in aquatic plant? 